And as we move towards this a practice of ahimsa, uh, how can we treat ourselves with more kindness? So even though the ahimsa stands for nonviolence, when we flip it, it becomes this how can we extend kindness towards ourselves? So you can allow the palms to face down onto the knees and to have this grounding gesture, a feeling of turning inside, turning into yourself and starting to lengthen the breath out and feeling into a, a fullness of breath within the belly. And with the exhale and emptying. And so I'm going to be overusing this word definitely, but I love the idea of having kind eyes. So kind eyes seeing something. But can you even breathe kindly? Rather than grasping, grabbing for the breath. Just let it be this receptivity, a welcoming and enjoyment. And let's awaken a little more connection to the body by taking a short body blessing. So it's a bit weird. You'll have to roll with me here. So just giving the hands a rub and then actually kissing the palms to infuse the hands with love and place the hands over the eyes. And as you do this, just allow that love and that warmth to penetrate into the eyes. And at this point, you can then brush over the forehead and just having gratitude is such a wonderful gateway to kindness. So maybe massaging the head and massaging your monkey mind, even though we know that the uh, thoughts aren't localized in the brain it kind of feels that way so even having gratitude for this busy head of ours and massaging the shoulders and going for a feeling of gratitude for the shoulders being strong enough to carry those heavy heavy burdens that heavy load and then massaging down the arms and actually opening your eyes, looking at the arms and even the hands as you massage the hands, just going into this experience of gratitude for even having two arms. How lucky am I to have two arms? I am so blessed to have two arms and two hands, to bring food to my mouth, to cook food, to hug another, to do yoga, to handstand on. You can rub the hands together again and kiss the palms and place the hands over the chest. And as you do this, just feeling into your heart and this heart that can soar with joy, that can feel like it breaks from time to time. And this heart of ours that gives so much gratitude, gratitude for this heart. And then massaging in a circular motion around the belly and Gratitude for these organs that digest and our belly can certainly hate on it a little because of it doesn't look a certain way, but actually it's doing a fine job. Thank you. Thank you, belly. And coming to the back and rubbing the hands up and down the back and thanking the spine for being able to put your back into it and so grateful, so grateful. You can bring the legs out now and brushing these long strokes down the legs and so grateful, so grateful for these legs 
you should actually be able to feel a tangible shift in the body as you look at the legs and brush down the legs really thank you thank you thank you so much what a a delight to actually have two legs you can come into diamond pose here and keep brushing down your legs and and then cup the hands over the knees and pause for a moment and even smile. Smile outwardly. You're lucky you're at home. No one's watching. So just smiling outwardly. And then smile inwardly. And can you imagine those kind eyes that I spoke of earlier, these kind eyes like from the backs of the eyes, just streaming down, streaming down, looking at your body with these kind eyes from the inside. How blessed we are to have these bodies of ours. Two arms, two legs, crazy lucky. We are crazy lucky to have two arms, two legs and that they deserve your kindness. Whatever they look like, however their functioning is, even if you're aging, even if you're injured, you can still extend this random act of kindness towards yourself. And from here, let's then awaken some spinal flexion. So inhale to open through the front of the body and lift through the heart. And with your exhale, rocking back, rounding. Inhale to lift and open. And exhaling, rocking back, hanging off the knees, rock back. Inhale to lift and this time exhale folding forward. So turning it into that two breath cycle. Inhale, sliding the hands up to the knees, lift and open and exhaling to rock back. Just getting into the rhythm, getting into your body as we warm the body up a little making sure that you move with kindness. And it may be that that extending kindness to yourself is just too much, it's too far. And so what you could do is step one would be at least to celebrate that you've had an awareness of any unkindness that you are saying or doing to yourself. Stage two might be to turn the volume down on those thoughts to moving towards a more neutral, neutral experience. And then maybe you can start to awaken kindness and it might be by a reframe of at least gratitude. What a blessing, what a blessing. Okay, next time you fold forward, you can hold here and perhaps take the elbows to the outside and meeting an edge here. So if you need to stay up here more, that's fine. We're all going to have our own beautiful, unique edge. The good thing about being at home doing yoga by yourself is that you don't have to compare yourself and that's definitely a big thing that happens a big source of unkindness is in a yoga room comparing ourselves to other people around so rejoice that you are here by yourself and then you can bring yourself on up and bring the hands into namaste and Cultivating this intention for greater kindness towards yourself. And I'm sure you all know exactly the areas that you are unkind, but there may be other hidden ones that are less obvious, less overt. So just be open to seeing it all 
through this practice. You can then swing the legs around and come towards a hands and knees position. In hands and knees, tuck the toes towards you and rather than the arms and thighs vertical, just walk the hands forward so you're ready for a downward facing dog in a moment. Inhale to open through the front of the body. And with your exhale, press the palms away and rounding through the back. Inhale to send the heart forward. And exhaling to round. Come to your inhale shape. And exhale here, stabilizing through the core. Inhale to lift up into a downward facing dog with just with knees bent. And then exhale again, stabilize and get settled. Maybe scanning through the body, are there areas that you're hardening around? And is that kind? Are there places where you're over efforting and maybe just dialing it back so the effortlessness in action practice does work beautifully with kindness as does many of our being yoga alignment um, the reworkings that we've done with the alignment so that there's a, a kindness there you can then straighten the legs out and come towards a plank pose opening through the front of the body and press the earth away from you as you lower yourself down onto the belly. Reach the hands back alongside the hips and rise up into Shalabhasana. So lifting through the thighs, lightly press the palms down and lift through the upper back. And then exhaling to lower yourself down. Rise up through a full or a half push up and pressing back into downward facing dog. So as an act of kindness, so you could open one hamstring up at a time, grounding one heel at a time. And then bending the knees, walk the hands back to the back of the mat, back to the feet and lift halfway up, lengthening and opening through the front of the body. And with your exhale, folding yourself in. Come on up through a spinal roll, so unfurling as you rise up. Bring the palms to touch overhead. And exhale the hands down through Namaste. So I'm just turning so you can see. Inhale and imagine this fountain of kindness bursting up and opening out above your head. Open the arms out, palms facing up and circling back around. So tapping into this wellspring of kindness. We all have um, someone or something in, we, in our life, maybe pets awaken a feeling of kindness or um, a loved one, maybe it's a, a little baby that awaken a, a feeling of How can you offer that to yourself so we can awaken it through remembering, but then you want to extend that to yourself. So as you softly circle the arms around, just getting this sense of taking one step towards this, being gentle with yourself. You can bring the hands back into Namaste and turning this into the half sun salute. So inhale to reach the arms up, and with soft knees, exhale, pour the spine forward and down. Inhale to lift halfway up, which might be hands onto the shins or fingers to the earth. And then exhaling and folding yourself in. Come up through a reverse swan dive. Press through the feet and long through the spine. Palms touch overhead and exhaling the hands down through the center like that fountain again bursting from your source and opening out exhale fold forward and down
Inhale to lift halfway up and lengthen through the spine. And then planting the hands, walk the hands forward, coming into a plank pose. So let's flow a little here. Inhale, lift the hips and rise up into downward facing dog. So the heels are lifted high. And exhale, grounding both heels towards the earth. Inhale, lift the heels, travel forward into a plank pose. And exhaling, lowering yourself down all the way to the floor. Inhale, rise up into a, a back bend. Just notice, is your lower back feeling pinched or hard or compressed? How can you again extend that gentleness through the pose, through the spine? Exhale and lower. Inhale to rise up into a plank and exhale into downward facing dog. And then walking the hands back and coming into this Ardha Uttanasana, lift halfway up and exhaling to fold yourself in. Inhaling, emerging from that wellspring of goodness and exhale the hands down through Namaste. Inhale, hands come up the center again, just like a fountain, opening, opening, receiving. So any giving and receiving, you need to receive that kindness towards yourself so that you can then give it to others as well. Inhale to lift halfway up. Bend the knees, walk yourself forward and coming into downward facing dog. Inhale to lift the heels high, lift the hips, and exhaling, grounding the heels into the earth. Inhale, lift the heels, maybe rippling the spine as you travel forward towards a plank. And exhale, lift as you lower. Inhale to rise up. So maybe there is a, a need for tough love from time to time, but only you can know that. I don't know many people who are too soft on themselves. Generally, people are too harsh on themselves. Inhale to lift to a plank and exhale to downward facing dog. Let's add in a lunge here. So inhale the right leg to the sky. And exhale to step forward. Either a high lunge or a low lunge, your choice. Anjaniyasana, crescent pose. Inhale to sweep the arms up and exhale back down to the earth. Inhale back into your plank and exhale back into downward facing dog. Again, let's inhale, lift the heels high. And exhale a gentleness as you ground the heels. Inhale to float the left leg to the sky. And exhaling, stepping forward. And even this stepping forward, so many people um, struggle with that and uh, are down on themselves for that. So if you need to help the foot forward, no problem. Inhale to lift. And exhale back down to the earth. Inhale into plank. And exhale back into downward facing dog. You can then walk the hands back to the feet at the back of the mat. Inhale to lift halfway up. And maybe as your hamstrings start to open, you can fold yourself in a little deeper. With soft knees, inhale, emerge, and tapping back into that fountain. So maybe it's a, a remembrance. I know my dog, she opens my heart and opens me and connects me into that kindness. So inhale, one last time, stretching the arms up, that fountain. Exhale, receive, become porous. Inhale to lift halfway up. And then walking the hands forward, coming into downward facing dog. Inhale to lift the heels high. And exhaling, grounding the heels. 
inhale lift the heels maybe it's that rippling spine to come forward into your plank and exhaling to lower yourself down find your back bend maybe compassion could be a good basis for you to move from inhale to lift and exhale back to downward facing so adding in a tiger curl here inhale your right leg to the sky exhale knee into the chest like it's a hug like it's an embrace maybe kissing your knee inhale to stretch up and back and exhaling the foot forward and so already are there any judgments coming up towards yourself inhale to lift about any injuries about any frustrations step back into plank and exhale back to downward facing dog inhale to take the left leg to the sky and again that tiger curl make it a sweet embrace kissing the knee inhale and coming up and step the foot through to the space between the hands inhaling to rise up palms touch and exhale hands down to the earth inhale back into your plank and exhale into downward facing dog you can then walk the hands back lift halfway up lengthening through the spine and exhaling folding yourself in again tapping into that wellspring that fountain and verse as it rises up reaching up and exhaling sprinkle that stuff everywhere kindness to yourself I'm just pausing here here in Tadasana at the back of the mat maybe resting the arms alongside the body and so there's a, a bhavana bhavana is a, a feeling or a, a quality it's like a, a tea bag that's put into water and the tea infuses the water with color and with flavor so how does moving in this way color and flavor your body And as we do these inner practices of the yamas, ahimsa being the most important, then naturally it's going to have a flow on effect. So as we are kind to ourselves, then we're more likely to be kind to others. Yet being kind to ourselves can seem like the hardest thing. So let's um, just take the right, take the arms up, inhale. Let's actually come back to that fountain. Inhale and bring the arms up through center and as you exhale, circling them around. Inhaling, taking the arms up through center. And this time keep the right arm lifted and take the left elbow underneath. So Garuda arms. So your right elbow, right elbow is on top. Inhale to lift up through the fingertips. And as you exhale, come into a chair pose with that Garuda arms. Inhaling and lifting, maybe even arching back a little here if that's available to you. And exhaling. So how does violence, how are you violent to yourself on the yoga mat? Is it overdoing it? Is it underdoing it? Is it um, skipping Shavasana? <laughs> Maybe. All right. You can then lift the left knee up and come over into your Garuda position. 
And as we come into a balance, so a balance pose is also a very popular way that we are harsh on ourselves. Maybe you can't balance. Maybe you have some physical thing that doesn't allow you to balance. So what are the poses that awaken frustration within you? And then maybe instead have that tea bag, that bhavana of kindness and just let it infuse. Maybe that gratitude could be a, a start. Okay, then inhaling and rising up, lifting through the knee. Exhale and come down into your chair pose once again. Inhale, lift the right leg up. So not going straight to the other side, just um, coming back into a Virabhadrasana three. So hopefully you have room behind you. Just for a moment and inhaling to stretch the arms up, stretch the knee up and exhale to tap the foot down. Keep the arms up and this time keep the left arm lifted. Take the right arm underneath and coming into Garudasana. Lift the elbows here as you inhale and then exhaling and coming down into the chair pose position. Inhale to lift, maybe arching back a little and exhaling to sink down. And then inhaling and lifting, this time the right leg lifts and crossing over, coming into your Garuda pose on the second side. And again, if balance poses do awaken that frustration, then how wonderful. It can be a great way for you to not judge yourself. Maybe the first step is just that neutral ground, neutral ground. And then inhaling, unraveling, lifting the right knee up. Exhale down into your Utkatasana chair pose again. Inhale and lifting the left leg up. And then sending the leg back into this Virabhadrasana three shape. If you need to, hands could be on the floor. Inhale and lifting, just noticing any judgments about yourself that you may have. Release the hands back down and you're in uh, Tadasana at the back of the mat. You can then inhale and sweep the arms out and up. And with an exhale, forward fold. Lift halfway up as you inhale. And then walking the hands forward and into your downward facing dog. Again, lift the heels high with your inhale. And as you exhale, grounding the heels down. Inhale, travel forward, maybe with that rippling spine into your plank. And exhale, lowering down onto the earth. Let's rise up into Cobra, lengthening the toes back and the heart forward, broaden the collarbones and just be willing to shine that kind heart of yours out into the world. Maybe it can be easier to be kind to others than it can be to yourself. And that's a red flag, just, quite, just saying. All right, exhaling to lower. Rise up through your full or a half push up and pressing back into downward facing dog. You can then inhale the right leg to the sky. Take a tiger curl again, knee into the chest. Inhale to stretch up and back. And then exhale the foot forward to the hands. Keep your left hand on the floor. Inhale the right arm open to the sky. And then exhale the right hand down onto the right thigh. Inhale the left arm up, opening and twisting here. Exhaling across and into the twist. And again, uh, so you'll be in the namaste hands and twisted around. So again, just noting 
is there any judgment of yourself? Maybe if you need to have the back knee down, maybe if you need to take an easier version, just noticing. Notice what you notice. Experience yourself from this, almost like from an outsider perspective about your inner dialogue, what's really going on inside. All right, you can then release and touch the hands down either side of the foot and rock yourself back. Feel free to have some padding underneath the knee. Inhale to rock forward. And exhale, moving back. And then after a few of these, let's stay and hold the hamstring opening. Another favorite spot for people to get down on themselves. So you know what to do. Again, just sprinkle that stuff everywhere. Mm. Perhaps rather than um, tearing yourself down about how tight your hamstrings are, maybe focus on how strong they are, how they hold you strong so that you can move through your life. It's a very different, or it's a reframe that might change your attitude towards yourself as an option. All right, so then from here, you can travel forward and let's um, straighten through the back leg. We'll inhale and sweeping the arms up overhead. So we're moving towards Virabhadrasana three now, which you could keep the arms forward or arms to the side or hands on the floor. So launching yourself forward, I'm going to try and not fall off my deck and um, doing your best to drop that left hip way down. Maybe by bending the right knee, you can access that. And again, just notice your self-talk. Where are you at with yourself? Potentially, just for one moment, you could take the left hand down and the right arm up. That doesn't have to happen for a uh, revolved Ardha Chandrasana, pretty tough pose. All right, releasing and stepping back. Thank goodness everything's optional. And it always is, yet sometimes, just rock forward and back a few times. This is compassionate sequencing that we do rather than just hammer the one leg. So rocking forward now and coming into a quad stretch. So you can reach back either with your left hand for the left foot or some of you might be able to do right hand for the back foot. Still others might be able to drop down, elbow onto the floor. And again, notice the potential for judging. So potentially judging yourself for being less than or maybe even for being better than that can happen as well and then often those people are just in trapped in comparison the whole time so notice how this practice brings a greater sense of presence Unhinge the jaw, find that effortless ease, and take one more breath here.
And then from there you can release and step yourself back into, uh, actually we're going to go into a side plank. So left hand onto the floor and then pivoting yourself around and come into side plank. Sorry for my back view. Yes, great. And then you've got options of maybe lifting the knee. You can then flip over, come into plank pose, maybe with the right leg lifted and lowering yourself down. Come down onto the belly, rise up into sphinx pose with the elbows underneath the shoulders. Lift through the belly and send the heart forward, broaden across the collarbones. And releasing down, um, feel free to take child's pose or rest with the four, hands on the forehead. Some of you might like to come into bow pose though. Coming into that opening through the front of the body. And again, doing so from a place of being kind to yourself, compassionate to yourself. So you can then release out of that. Again, some compassionate sequencing would be to come up to hands and knees and take a few cat's breath to open through the spine. And then let's tuck the toes and move back into downward facing dog. Smoothly inhale the left leg to the sky. And again, a tiger curl coming forward, a real embrace. Thank you legs, I'm so lucky to have two legs. Inhale to stretch the leg up. And exhale to step the foot forward to the hands. You could make a fist on the, with the right hand and inhale the left arm open to the sky. So feel free to stay here or we're transitioning into the deeper version. So it would be left hand, left thigh. Inhale and take the right arm up. That's it. And exhale, twisting yourself around. Maybe with namaste hands. Remember, you've always got the other modification. And even how do you, how do you judge that? Is it... Do you feel like it's a, a lesser option? Because that's your perception. It's a completely valid pose to take this variation. Wonderful, all right, release and touch the hands down, drop the back knee to the floor and then rocking forward and back a few times. Inhale forward to lift the chest. And as you exhale and rock back, make sure that if the pelvis were a bowl of water, it's tipping forward, that you're folding from the hips, not so much rounding through the spine. One last one, and then we'll hold here, greeting our hamstrings. So uh, making sure the right hip is coming forward. Greeting our hamstrings just with this sense of a random act of kindness. What would that be? That random act of kindness might be to bend the knee a little. It may be to work with a block. Maybe it's changing the inner dialogue, perhaps just turning the volume down on the thoughts. This zip file that can open as soon as we get into a pose and the whole story tends to unload, unfold. But if you just turn the volume down on that and actually be present with what it truly is. So you can then rock forward and straighten through the back leg. Inhale to sweep the arms up. 
and then tipping the torso forward. Uh, you can keep the arms lifted, so finding your happy place here. Do uh, bend your left leg to really drop the right hip down, and then maybe straightening through the leg again. Brighten through the back leg and through to the crown. And this kindness might be skipping this pose, but if you're perpetually underdoing things, then maybe you do need some tough love. Who knows? Only you know. That's the great news. Okay, you can then take, if it's just for a moment, take the right hand down and the left arm up. Or, or you can collapse in a heap. That's totally valid as well. And then release and touch down. Dropping the back knee down. Again, that compassionate sequencing that we do in being yoga rather than just hammering one leg. It's totally fine to release through that leg. And then we reach back for the back foot. So you've got plenty of options. And just thinking of them as options, not even graded. That's what we are constantly doing is grading ourselves in relation to others. Which sometimes is important, but often it's not very kind. So making this yama of ahimsa your most important part, most important uh, focus for this practice. And certainly deep stretching can be very kind. It can also be extreme, uh, done in an extremely aggressive way, hard way. So kindness isn't always soft and gentle, but often it is. Like I said, I don't know many people who are too soft on themselves. Most of us are too hard on ourselves. You can then release out of that, straighten through the back leg, and we come into the side plank, flipping over onto the right hand. So you've got this or the knee down option or taking the knee and lifting it up, catching hold, potentially flipping over maybe into a one-legged plank. And again, are you judging yourself about your abilities? It's okay to check your level, but make sure that it's done in a kind way. Give yourself a, hmm, <laughs> what are the awards these days? Just that um, participation award, <laughs> just for participating. Okay, option to take bow pose, or you can simply be with the hands on the, uh, forehead on the hands. Excellent work. And then coming down. We'll stay down this time. If you feel you need to release your lower back, again, um, counterposing can be a very kind thing to do. You may need to go into a short child's pose. But if you're able to, take your um, left leg out to the side at a, uh, like a zigzag angle. And then looking side to side, so looking over the left shoulder, then looking over the right, and just moving in this way, side to side. So hopefully you're starting to see your tendencies and hopefully do something about it. So we now take the right hand forward and thread the left arm under across the chest. I've got a microphone here, it's a bit tricky, but um, hopefully straight out from your mat. And you can rest down onto the belly, even resting the forehead down. 
I don't look comfortable. It's actually not, but you could, um, should just be quite flat like a pancake. And again, that stretching can be kind and compassionate. It can be overdone though, as well. We move into a little bit of violence towards ourselves. So let's come on up now. And yes, you can only be the judge of that. Now the right hand comes underneath and we'll turn this into a spinal twist. So pressing the palms onto each other and then tracing the summer sun through the sky and twisting over to the side. So you can bring in your head turning and looking over that left hand as much as possible. Maybe bringing the right shoulder blade out to increase the opening. And again, tracing that summer sun through the sky, setting palms onto each other and flipping yourself back over through your center. Take dolphin plank. So you could go forearms stay parallel to each other or go namaste hands. And then walk the feet in, moving towards a dolphin pose. So lifting up through the hips, go chest back to the legs, nodding the head yes. And again, snoting any maybe hardness through the body. Maybe is there any, it's not so much comparison here, but is there, are there parts of the body that are overexerting? Are there parts of the body that you're dumping into that is unkind? You can then walk the feet back and lower yourself down. Find Sphinx pose for a moment. And then taking the right leg out. Again, it's at that zigzag angle. And twisting Goanna like, looking over shoulder to shoulder. Maybe with the breath, maybe not. Okay, coming back through center and stretching the left arm forward and the right arm comes across the chest. So your chest is facing towards the earth. If you do have any shoulder, if you have any shoulder issues, this could be too much. And um, uh, injuries are definitely an important way to work with a kind awareness, work with those kind eyes. Because yes, you need to challenge an injury, but equally you need to respect, accept, and be patient. So to you, kindness may be patience. We can all have a different spin on this. All right, you can then release out of that and take your uh, right arm straight out, the same side as the right leg. Press the palms onto each other and then taking your left arm over that pathway of the summer sun through the sky. Pausing here. And again, with those kind eyes, so from the backs of the eyes, just streaming loving light down through the interiority of the body. And there's an element of acceptance and maybe even awakening that compassion. 
maybe gratitude is a, a good gateway for you. So you can then uh, stay on the side, use this left arm to come back over and press yourself up to a seated position. So we're going to just take a little bit of a pranayama practice. So this is a following the Raja Yoga pathway or the Ashtanga Eightfold Path. Yama, Niyama, Asana. We've done the Asana. Let's do some Pranayama. And then Pratyahara, Shavasana is that sense withdrawal. So take a few breaths down into your belly, maybe finding a full yogic breath or a Ujjayi breath with that soft oceanic sound in the back of the throat. Again, that Shavasana pattern, that Ujjayi can be done in a harsh way as well. So giving everything this flavor of kindness. Maybe with a soft smile. potentially with a easy, soft eyes. And after the next exhalation, you can let that practice go. We'll do a few rounds of the Nadi Shodhana. So bringing your dominant hand up onto your face, uh, index finger, middle finger, touch the third eye point, ring and thumb to the nostrils. Take an inhale through both nostrils and exhale through the left. So blocking off the right, exhale left. Inhale through the left nostril. And exhaling through the right. It's not an ujjayi breath, just continue with a, a full breath. Inhale through the right. and exhaling left. Adding almost an awareness focus, inhale through the left, like you're breathing up to the third eye point where the fingers are. And exhale from the third eye out through the right nostril. Inhale right from the outer ring of the nostril to the third eye point. And exhale through the left. One more round on your own. So one round is two breaths. Not only it's the breath, but the awareness focus as well. Like a meditation. After you've completed the exhale through the left nostril, then resting the arms down and pausing for a moment. Maybe a little lift through the corners of the mouth. 
remember those party popper moments. So every time that you have become aware of being harsh on yourself, it's a moment to celebrate, not yet another reason to be down on yourself. So think of all of those party popper moments that you have had through this practice. And give yourself the greatest gift of kindness laying yourself down in shavasana laying on your back maybe with the bolster under the knees or your cushion underneath the knees Equally giving yourself the gift of stillness. As you lay your body down and are aware of the shape that your body has taken on the floor, be aware of the shape of the room. So this pratyahara, this internalization, moving into the inner practices, taking your awareness from the just outside of the room. To within the room. This is proprioception, how we know where we are in space, but equally we have introception, which is how we relate on the inside of the body. So feeling into the interiority of the body. And extend your sense of hearing out to the most distant sound that you can hear. Coming in closer within the room, listening intently, listening as if you were about to imitate. and listening within yourself, feeling, sensing, knowing, understanding from the inside of you, the blood pumping, the muscles resting, all the senses that are our interface with the outer world, they turn inside, they turn a far more interested on the inner landscape. The rivers, the streams, the mountains, the valleys, the hard, the soft. the dense, the energetic, the light.
and the Buddhist practice of metta bhavana, this loving kindness. Maybe at this point you're able to open to that possibility of greater self-love. That you are doing the best you can with what you have and that you deserve greater kindness from yourself. That this body is truly a body temple. You would never go into a temple and spray paint words of hate onto the walls. Yet we do this often, day in, day out, when we look in the mirror, when we speak with friends. So instead, seeing this body temple as holy ground, changing your inner vocabulary to speak more highly of yourself. And in this moment, what might the ripple effect be as you are kind to yourself? Who may that affect? Maybe the little eyes that are watching you. Maybe it's your partner, your children, friends, family. Never underestimate the potent gift of giving kindness to yourself, that this can have a ripple effect across the planet. Carry with you the blessings and gifts, insights, understandings, lessons and learnings from this practice, ingest them fully right now as you awaken a longer, fuller breath. And awakening your body as you see fit, we are moving into the meditation practice. So when you're ready to rolling yourself over to the side. Coming on up to a seated position, comfortable meditation position, which could be sitting into a chair. So it might be the kindest thing to yourself to sit in a chair. rather than being hard on your body, on your knees, on your back. Small little ways. So as you sit still, as you find your steady and comfortable posture, Stira Sukha Asanam, this steady, stable pose. We move into Dharana, some techniques for focus to quiet the mind. We will be moving our awareness through the body. So imagine a fluorescent tube of light from the pelvic floor to the base of the skull or to the upper palate. Imagine a fluorescent tube of light. And as you inhale, breathe up through that central channel, 
breathing up to the third eye point on the inhale and exhaling down from the third eye down that central channel back down to the pelvic floor inhaling up and exhaling down but it's not a breathing practice the idea is to be with the softest faintest barest breath Inhaling lightness up. In fact, it could be a light up. And exhaling that same colored light back down. The thing with meditation techniques is that they are, that forgetting and remembering is part of meditation. So you are focused, are diligent, and then all of a sudden you drift off and you realize, oh, that's right, I was supposed to be doing some breathing up and down my body. No problem. Return again and again, patiently, persistently, and with kindness. Now changing the practice slightly, inhale up and exhale at the third eye point with an om. And if you're able to, doing it out loud twice, whispered twice and then silent. So please do it with me, inhaling up through the central channel to the third eye point. Oh. As if the third eye had a set of lips there and was oming. Oh. Too whispered. Oh. and too silent. And now keeping your attention at the third eye point. Still dharana, these different practices to help to quiet the mind. My own personal interpretation of dhyana is those spontaneous moments. Not here, not there. Samadhi could be this awakening of full bliss. But these moments of dhyana, these glimpses of the realization of who you are, of your true nature of the absolute truth. Just as a farmer can till the soil and fertilize and take care of the seedlings, we can create a, a ground 
for this dhyana and this samadhi to spontaneously germinate and blossom. The farmer doesn't make the plants grow, but creates the conditions for them to have the greatest success. So continue to rest your awareness at the third eye. Ajna chakra, the space between the eyebrows. Forgetting and remembering is still part of the process. open to those spontaneous glimpses of your true nature, spontaneous arisings of bliss, that samadhi. with loving kindness. This metta bhavana. These eyes that usually look out and see the world, turn them inside, see into yourself. Awakening a, a sense of wonder and awe at this inner landscape, the inner workings of you.
to paraphrase Rumi, why do you look outside when a tr there is a treasure trove within you? And as you recognize that treasure trove of goodness within you, surely you can awaken greater kindness towards yourself, which will then naturally overflow out and affect every single relationship. And in the same way, let us share our blessings out now. We'll send our blessings out across the planet. You may like to open the arms, palms facing forward and taking that kindness that you have cultivated inside and sharing it out across the planet. Loving kindness. May all beings across all realms be happy. See yourself as a a god or goddess, a benevolent giver of blessings that you have tapped into the wellspring and have plenty to give and plenty to share. May all beings across all realms be happy and free from suffering. Please join me with the short Shantipath if you know it. Take a long inhale, sending our blessings out. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu sushantir bhavantu sushantir bhavantu Om Shanti 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 and one Om Oh Take the last little inklings of those benevolent blessings from your hands and brush them through your hair, over your mind, over your brain, over your face and down your arms. Little prana bath down the chest and the legs and down the back and the legs all the way to the feet. Blessing yourself, blessing yourself, blessing all beings. May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be free from suffering, may all beings be free from suffering. Namaste to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much.